Hey everybody, welcome back, Mr. G again. Um, in this example for superposition theory, what I've done, it's very similar to the last example we did, but I have swapped the polarity of one of the supplies. So just to give you an idea of how this all works, um, we had, in the previous case, we had a 5 volt supply going this way, and then we had a 10 volt supply going that way as well. Now what I've done is I've swapped that supply over, and I just want to show you how it actually affects the circuit. The procedure and everything is exactly the same, and, uh, and we'll walk through it step by step. So again, if you need more information, chapter 8-4 of our textbook, so Principles of Electric Circuits, Conventional Current by Floyd and Bakla. So what we're going to do is we're going to go through this example and the procedure is identical. What we're going to do is look at each power supply individually and then put it all together back in the original circuit at the end. So again, we're concerned with two things. One is the magnitude of the current. The second is the direction of the current flow. So the magnitude and the direction. So I'm just going to take this circuit and we're going to recreate it on a worksheet. So the first one we're going to do, we'll do the 5 volt supply. Again, it doesn't matter which supply you do first because they're completely independent. So Here's where I've removed the 10 volt supply. That's gone out of the circuit now. So we got 5 volts, we got a 1K, we have a 2K, and we have a 3K. So this circuit simplifies down to one resistor in series with these ones in parallel. So that ends up being like this. So what we have is we have a 1K. This resistor represents those two, and those two in parallel, and that comes out to be 1.2K. So if you take 2K and put it in parallel with 3K, you get 1.2K and the five volts there. So now what we wanna do is we wanna find out uh, what our total current in that circuit is. So we got I total is equal to 5 volts, Ohm's law, and then we got 2.2K when you look at those resistors. And that math works out to be 2.27 milliamps. So that means that from this supply, current leaves the supply 2.27 milliamps. Some of it goes here, some of it goes here. And again, the direction is very important. Okay, so leaving the supply, the path would be there and the path would be there. So we need to figure out how much is going through the 2K and how much is going through the 3K. So we're going to use our current divider formula and we're going to find out the current through the 2K is actually equal to the total current 2.27 milliamps and the resistance total of these two things together is 1.2k so we have 1.2k and the 2k so this is the way that the current divider works and if you can't remember current divider it's in our textbook take another look so if we did this math so we got 1.2K over 2K times this, it should come out to be 1.36 milliamps. So that means that the current going through this resistor is 1.36 milliamps. Then I'll do current through the 3K. Again, same thing, 2.27 milliamps. And this is 1.2K over this time it's 3K. 
and that works out to be 0.9 milliamps. So this plus this must add up to that, and they do. So that means that when I apply this one, it is 0.9 milliamps going in that direction through that resistor. Okay, so now what we're going to do, those are the values, again, through that circuit. The 10 volt supply is removed, the 5 volt supply is kept in place, so these are the currents being produced by the 5 volt supply. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to recreate our original circuit. So here again is our original circuit. Okay, The 10 volts is now upside down to where it was before, and the 5 volts is going to be what's disappearing. So I've got my 10 volt supply. Here's the 1K, here's the 2K, 3K, 10 volt supply, and where I remove that just replacing it with a short. So again, the red represents where I have taken that supply out of. So I'm going to simplify this circuit down. Again, it's this resistor in series with these two in parallel. So that ends up being this. So there's the 10 volts. This is 3K, and this resistor represents those two resistors in uh, parallel. So if you take a 1K and a 2K resistor in parallel, it comes out to be 0.666K. So therefore the R total is 3.666K. So we can find I total from the supply so that becomes 10 volts over 3.666K. And I total in this case is 10 divided by 3.666K. 2.73, we'll call it 2.73 milliamps. 2.73 milliamps. So we got 2.73 milliamps. Now we're going to track the direction of that current. So that current is going to leave the positive end of the supply and go this way. Some of it's going to go there. Some of it's going to go there. Then they're going to rejoin here and flow together through here. So that means that the current going through the 3K is the total current at 2.73 milliamps. Now we have to find out how much is going through the 2K and how much is going through the 1K. So we'll use the same method as we used down below. And we'll use the current divider. So we'll say the current through the 1K is equal to 2.73 milliamps. And it splits between these two. So it is 0.666 over 1K. And that current works out to be 1.8 milliamps. And then the current through the 2K is the same thing, 2.73, and it's 0.666 divided by the 2K. So we'll just keep things good. And that current is 0.9 milliamps. Okay, so this one plus this one need to add up to this one, and they do. So what that means is, on the 2K, this is 0.9 milliamps. 
On the 1K, this is 1.8 milliamps. So now we have our magnitudes and directions from each supply. So the magnitude and direction of current from each supply. What we're going to do is we're going to go back to our original and we're going to superimpose the currents from the working sheet onto the original. So if we looked at the current, actually yeah, we'll do this. That's fine. If we looked at this current going in this direction is 2.27 milliamps. Then going in this direction is 1.8 milliamps. For this one, we have current going in this direction of 2.73 milliamps and we also have current going in the same direction for 0.9 milliamps. For this resistor we got current going this way at 1.36 milliamps and we have current going this way at 0.9 milliamps. So what that all translates down to when we look at it is this. So this whole thing goes to this. So here's our 10 volts, here's our 5 volts, this is the 1K this is the 2K and this is the 3K and we're going to do the algebraic sum so because these two currents are flowing in the same direction they get added 2.27 plus 1.8 equals 4.07 milliamps so 4.07 milliamps flowing in this direction Again, both currents are flowing in the same direction here. So we get 2.73 plus 0.9, 6.36. Sorry, 3.63. Uh, 3.63 milliamps. And then if you look here we have current flowing in opposite directions. Okay, so we got current flowing in opposite directions through that 2K, so they must subtract 1.36 minus 0.9 equals 0.46. So the magnitude is 0.46 milliamps and the direction is in the direction of the larger one which is this way. Just a little side note, take a look at this. This current going in that direction minus the stuff that goes down here is what is left going this direction. So again the current going here minus the current that leaves and goes down this direction is equal to the current going in this direction. So that is how you solve another superposition theory question. So we've got again we follow the procedure we start with the original we look at it from one supply calculate the currents look at it from the other supply, calculate the currents. Again, we're interested in the magnitude and the direction. Then we superimpose them onto the original circuit and do our final math to find our final currents through those resistors. And then you can apply Ohm's law and get your voltages across each one if you like. So for more help with superposition theory. Take a look 
chapter 8-4 of our textbook. There you go, 8-4 of our textbook. Hope everybody is doing well. I really hope this helps. Until next time, everybody take care.